This is not okay for Bitcoin. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. To be or not to be is, of course, the ultimate question of this channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about some news. I'm going to show amazing charts, and I'm going to give you a beautiful, inspirational quote at the end, guys, from this amazing place over here in España. Now, let's quickly jump into the first part of the video, the news. The news for today, guys, is about the $800 billion worth chartered bank from the United Arabs, UAE, guys. This bank just announced they are launching custodial service for Bitcoin and Ethereum. To start with Bitcoin and Ethereum, maybe they will follow with more cryptocurrencies. But they just announced, and it's one of the bigger banks of the UAE, that they now launch custodial service for their clients. And what does that mean? Is that positive? Is that negative? I think there's a lot of opinions about it. On the one hand, it's very positive because it simplifies the access for the normal people to Bitcoin and Ethereum, which means they will be triggered into buying Bitcoin and Ethereum through their bank because they trust their bank. In this case, the standard chartered bank. But Revolut, for example, it has been doing this already since 2017. You are able to buy your Bitcoins through the Revolut app on your iPhone. You can just buy Bitcoin and sell Bitcoin, also Ethereum and also many other cryptocurrencies. So more and more banks are simplifying the access to Bitcoin and crypto, but also become a custodial service because of that. And that essentially means that if you buy your Bitcoins on most of these banks' custodial services, you won't be able to send your Bitcoins to me, for example, or to any other friend or family or whatever you want to spend your Bitcoins on. You're only able to sell your Bitcoins again within that banking app to that same bank. Now, the more that will happen, the more there will be control by the banks on those Bitcoins because they are your custodial service. They control your Bitcoins. They determine what you will do with your Bitcoins, just like they determine what you will do with your money. Are you allowed to take 10K, 20K, 50K out of an ATM and spend it somewhere in cash? Or aren't you allowed to do that at the moment? The more these banks become custodial servers, the more they have control and power on what you do with your Bitcoin as well. And that is exactly the reason why Bitcoin was invented against that centralized control system you should be holding your Bitcoins in self-custody on your own hardware wallets or software wallets or multi-sig wallet, doesn't matter as long you have full control on your Bitcoins because that's the only way you will be able to use your Bitcoins in a way that you want to use them. You will be free to send them wherever you want, to whoever you want, whenever you want, even how much you want, you determine that. If you have your Bitcoins, for example, on the Bitbox or on the Ledger, you can send millions of dollars of worth of Bitcoin to another person without any questions asked. Will that be the same if you want to send a million dollar worth of Bitcoin from your custodial banking app to another person? Or will then questions be asked? Trust me, it will be the second thing questions will be asked. Why are you sending so many Bitcoins to that person? Are you funding some terroristic attack or something? Or why are you buying so many cars or so many bottles of Bacardi or so many bottles of Moet champagne in clubs? They want to have full control on all your capital and also your Bitcoins. And because those banks now understand that the smart money, the smart people are moving their capital into the digital gold of the 21st century, Bitcoin, they now need to take a step to get a little bit of control on those Bitcoins as well. And that is why you will see in the last part of 2024 and throughout whole 2025, more and more banks announcing to become a custodial service for Bitcoin for their clients because they don't want to lose control on your capital. And we should be doing the opposite. We should wanting to have more control on our capital. As long as we keep using their services, those centralized banks, those centralized governments, they will be in control. The moment we shift to using our currencies and our services, everything built decentralized on the blockchain, 
we as people will get back that control. So don't be fooled. Yes, very positive. Simplifying the access to Bitcoin. No, it's doing exactly what Bitcoin shouldn't be doing. Let me know down below your honest opinion. Do you think it's bullish that these banks now become custodial service for Bitcoins or do you think it's bearish? And no, I'm not talking about the price because the price will always go up. Whatever they do, the price will go up every four year cycle. I'm talking about what we'll do to Bitcoin in the long term. That unconfiscatable gold of the 21st century gateway to freedom asset. What we'll do to that Bitcoin. What will that custodial service of the banks do to this? Let me know down below. Now, let's quickly jump into the charts. The first chart for today, guys, is of course this four hour chart. On the four hour chart, we can see, of course, that buy signal that we took, the candle were closing above the yellow stepping line. You could have taken it over there and uh, you should have exited somewhere at the sell signal or when this candle closes down below the stepping line. Why between those uh, options? First of all, if you sell at the sales signal, you're always in profit. But we could see bouncing from the other stepping line even higher, so your profits could be higher. The moment we see a candle closing down below the other stepping line, that's a confirmation of a short. It's a confirmation of you're selling your like, profitable um, long. But there will be more profit at the sales signal. There will be less profit at the signal of closing down below the yellow stepping line, but then you still have the chance to stay in that trade if we don't close down below it. And that's what we see playing out at the moment. The candle is not closing down below the yellow stepping line. There is a whole volume area over there. So what is going to happen? Are we going to find support here? Long wick to the bottom support. Then we can go even higher and you can take more profits. But for me, Profit is profit. When you take profit on a sell signal, you can always enter a new trade. There will always be a new trade. The blue line is crossing the white line. You see the green hills decreasing. You see the red line on top. Okay, we can see that there is a downward movement. We can see there's a lot of gap to the bottom of the Bollinger gap all the way to 53. So if we close down below this one, make sure you um, close your long positions for the short term. Long term, nothing is changing. Uh, long term five days like midterm we need to close above that the midline of the Gaussian channel that's exactly what I told you like uh, 10 days ago if you go down below it we need to find support if you find support that's positive that is at the moment playing out we are finding support in that midline this scan is closing above it uh, it's going to close in 16 hours and 25 minutes if we close above it I expect that we are going to try to break that 62k level again with the next couple of candles and if you break that then we are back on track when it comes to the bull market we never went off track but like short term volatility off track will turn into short term volatility on track again uh, let me show you this on a couple of other charts that i think or i believe are very important at the moment those charts are over here this is the first one guys this chart is showing you that yes we need to survive this month of august and september this is the average return by month calculated over the years 2010 to 2024. So it's 14 years of data. An average August was minus 1.5%, September was even minus 4.5%. So an average that's like almost a 6% loss on those two months. Now, the more important thing that you should be focusing on the glass is half full, not half empty. What is happening after September? October, November, December in average were 29% plus months, 37% plus months, and 12% plus months. So in average, that's a total of almost 75% plus in those three months. That's a lot of plus in the next quarter. And then yes, January will probably be a little bit of a dip month, but still an average 10%, 16%. And we can see how the next year, 2025, January, all the way to July again, be very bullish. So the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months will again be very bullish months. You need to be positioning yourself into Bitcoin at this moment. At these dips, you should be buying, stop crying and add to your portfolio to take the profits over there. 
simple as it is. Now, then we have the Satoshi per US dollar. Uh, here we can see that um, how many Satoshis is needed to buy one US dollar. Like, for example, over here, it was still like a couple of million sets that you needed. Uh, then it became 8,332,000 sets. Then it became 154,000 sets to buy one US dollar. At the next halving, it was 11,665 sets to buy that US dollar. At this halving, it only was 1,563 sets to buy one US dollar. And at the next halving, 2028, again, it will be less sets that you need to buy a United States US dollar. Maybe only 250 sets to buy a US dollar or something in that range. But we can see, this is not the Bitcoin price going down. This is the amount of sets we need to buy a US dollar, which means Bitcoin is the ultimate tool to fight inflation. By buying Bitcoins, which are US dollar, you are outperforming the US dollar big time. Your purchasing power will increase. Simple as that. Now, then we have this chart. How big is Bitcoin at the moment? Bitcoin is a $1 trillion asset class. It's an average. Uh, now, gold is $17 trillion. Then we have art, $18 trillion. We have stocks, $110 trillion. Then we have fiat currency, $120 trillion. Then we have global debt, $315 trillion. And we have the real estate, $330 trillion. So that's the market cap comparison. Bitcoin is still a tiny little baby just getting started. We will beat gold in the future. If we want to beat gold, that probably means that the price of Bitcoin will go times 17 from here. You do the calculations how much that will be, but that will be around a million dollars per Bitcoin. And if some people of the art industry decide, hey, maybe we should also diversify a little bit into Bitcoin, then that could also lead into more people diversifying their art into Bitcoin, which means they sell a few paintings and they invest those paintings revenues in Bitcoin. The same with gold, the same with stocks. If those people say, hey, Bitcoin is growing so much, they are making so much profit with Bitcoin, maybe we should sell a couple of stocks and invest that also into Bitcoin. All that fiat currency that is like only undergoing inflation, ah, no, let's put it in gold or in stocks or in art or maybe in Bitcoin. Global debt, we already see the shift of many governments now going into Bitcoin. And the real estate, same thing over there. People will sell to sell some real estate and invest also in this new gold of the 21st century Bitcoin. This is going to be a huge asset class. This is going to be one of the biggest of this asset class. It's going to be the gold of the 21st century. It's going to be a market cap more than 17 trillion. I think even market cap maybe of 30 trillion in total in 10, 20 years. So why would you not buy Bitcoin at 50k if you understand that Bitcoin go to $10 million per Bitcoin, for example, in the next 20 years? That's just an amazing return of investment. That's generational wealth that you're creating there for your children. Now, then we have this chart. It's also a very important one. Uh, this one is the yearly candles. On the yearly candles, that's the most zoomed out I can give you. You can see, uh, of course, clearly that, of course, the beginning here, these years, 2011, 1,500%, 2012, 186%, and then here, 6,000% almost in 2013. Now, 14 was the first bear market. Then it was a red year. Then here, 2018 was another bear market, 73%, and here, another 64%. Every time when this happens, yeah, these red areas, those are the moments that the news, the media is telling you Bitcoin is a scam, it's a bubble, it's going to explode, never invest in Bitcoin. That's always happening in those periods. And most of your memories are always the memories of these negative experiences. And that's what you still think of. But please, start to focus on those other candles, those three green candles, which represent almost 9,000% over there which represent almost 1,500% over there. And then a 70% dip. We climbed 1,500%. We climbed almost 500% before the 60% dip. And now we already climbed almost 200%. And we will climb another year. Because if you look really closely, you can see three green candles, one red. That's the four-year cycle. Three bullish years, one bearish year. Three bullish years, one bearish year. Then we have three bullish years, one bearish year. Now we had the first bullish year, 
The second bullish year is now 2024, the third one will be 2025, and then that bearish year will be 2026. How simple? This is too simple. This is, this is something everyone should be understanding. Just understand that this year will be bullish, and next year could even be more bullish. Because if you look into these cycles, the third candle here was the most bullish candle. The third candle here was the most bullish candle. The only third candle that wasn't the most bullish one was the previous one because we had a double top. If this is going to be a blow-off top, a single blow-off top, then that third candle will be bigger than this one. And at the moment that's not very difficult. But again, October, November, December are going to be very bullish. So I think that this candle is going to be a little bit bigger, guys, almost to the 100,000 US dollar level before we get into that third candle that's going to go higher to 160,000 US dollar. Now, that was an amazing chart, wasn't it? Now we have one more chart and that is we are at the moment exactly where we need to be with Bitcoin and we'll keep repeating these types of charts till you completely understand the black line that is where we are at the moment. The yellow line is 2018 to 2021. The blue line is 2014 to 2017. All the times in September we were at the same position. We came a little bit down from a pre top uh, like first run in this Bitcoin price a little bit down we went sideways all the way till maybe October but midst of October all the way into November December January February March April May we only went up the next 12 to 15 months and even if we won't go as high as the yellow or that blue line even if we just go to this level over there this dollar line that's 126,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. So yes, this is the last moment for you guys to buy cheaply into Bitcoin as we are gonna double in price to these levels of 100K and even higher. That were all the charts for today, guys. Let's uh, jump into the next part. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. Yes, those charts are always very educational. You can see what Bitcoin is doing, how it has been moving in the past. That's why they call it TA, technical analyze, because you can analyze what Bitcoin did in the past and try to see what it would do in the future. It's never 100% guarantee that Bitcoin will do the same as it did in the past, but the more you can build your trading strategies on the past, the more profitable you will be. And if you're not a good trader, then please stay an investor. Just invest in Bitcoin. Don't trade it every day, just buy and hold it longer than four years and you will be making profits as well. You know, on average, it was like between 40 and 50% a year profit a Bitcoin. So the longer you hold Bitcoin, you will reach that 40 to 50% a year. What more do you want? That's a shitload of return of investment by just holding your capital in Bitcoin. I told you yesterday already to put everything in Bitcoin. My reasons behind that, I will keep telling you every time again and again, your full capital should be in Bitcoin. That will fight against inflation that will make your capital grow in the next 12 to 15 months. And if you want to exchange your Bitcoins at the end of the bull market top in 2025 into stable coins, USDT, USDC or DAI, all fine with me, do that. Park them in stable coins, buy those Bitcoin bags cheaper and multiply your Bitcoin capital. But understand that during that part of the four year cycle that Bitcoin is increasing, is going into that huge steep climb in prices, that is the part that you should be fully in Bitcoin not on your bank account, not in fiat currencies, guys. Now, let's jump into the last part of the video, the inspirational quote. A lot of people always want to move too fast, guys. A lot of people want to become rich in a day. A lot of people want to change their life in 24 hours. This is not always possible. The most important quote when it comes to this is, it doesn't matter how slow you move as long you don't stop. You just need to keep moving. If it takes longer than you expect, don't stop. Don't be discouraged. Just keep moving, keep moving. Slowly you will reach the end goal. It doesn't matter how fast you reach it. It matters that you reach it. And it also matters that whenever you reach it, that the time that you took to reach it was an amazing time. It's all about the path, not only about the end goal. The end goal will always change. The path that you are walking needs to be that beautiful happiness 
path that needs to be a path that makes you and everyone around you very happy. So it really doesn't matter how slow you go. It matters that you keep moving. As long we keep moving, as long we keep changing, as long we keep evolving, no matter how fast or slow, the world around us will change as well. And that's exactly the goal of life. The goal of life is not sitting there 24 seven on the same chair, on the same couch, in the same office, on the same, whatever it is. The goal of life is living life to the fullest, enjoying everything that is possible in our lives, as much as possible. And you will not achieve that by sitting still. You will achieve that by moving. Even if you move slowly, you're still moving and your life will be way more exciting than that life of sitting still or standing still, whatever it is. Please understand that, it's very important. And I know you all want to become rich in a day or want to change your life in 24 hours. That's just impossible. Bitcoin is also a long-term, slow play. It will take four years on average for your Bitcoins to be massively in profit. It's not going to happen in 24 hours. Some parts of the bull cycle, it will go a little bit quicker. Like now, we're in the last part of the bull cycle. We will double within our 12 months. But then again, it will take four years in total to get higher prices than the top of the 2025 bull market. So it doesn't matter how slow we move. It matters that we keep moving. Never stop moving. Never stand still. Always focus on to be or not to be. Do you want to be? a good person? Do you want to be that person that you envision yourself to be or do you not want to be that person? If you don't want to be, just keep sitting there, sitting on your couch, watching the sunset every day, the same sunset, whatever it is, or television, or Netflix, just keep doing that. You won't change, the people around you won't change, your children won't change, they will just copy their dad or their mom. If you grab life by the balls, lead by example, change your life, change the lives of others, that is the moment that your children will see you doing that. They will also follow you in those footsteps. Not becoming a hamster running a hamster wheel, but becoming a world explorer, exploring the world and helping the world to become a better place. At least that is my opinion. But let me know your opinion down below this video as well, guys. That was everything for today. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let me know what you think about all the subjects we spoke about. If you want to trade, yes, always trade on Bybit, that's my number one exchange, on Blowfin, that's my number two non-KYC exchange, and on Apex Omni, that's my DEX exchange. There's only three exchanges that you should be trading on because they have the best bonuses, all up to 30,000 US dollar, and they all have deposit bonuses and even prizes that you can win. So use those links to sign up to those exchanges, guys. And also, guys, I will never DM you to ask me to send money or to invest in a company. I will never direct message you. Yesterday, I again had a guy that was messaged by a scammer already since May, thinking he was talking to me, investing almost 200K in a fake algorithm network trading something. He sent that money there. I will never ask you to send money to me for an investment. Yes, you can buy t-shirts in a store, but direct payment. Yes, you can buy a VIP membership, but that's a direct payment. If you want to use a trading bot, we will connect our bot to your Bybit account. We won't ask you to send us funds. Never, ever, ever. So please be aware of all these scammers. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing, fuck hell, Wednesday. And see you tomorrow and Thursday again. Bam.